Hi guys, my name is Actual Vision and um, I just wanted to talk about what has happened in sim racing over the last couple of months since this COVID-19. Um, things happen to the world, horrendous, yeah, you know, stay safe and all of that good stuff. It's not been a good time, but in sim racing, the world has just transformed. It's a whole different landscape to when it began. And uh, I was just sat here thinking, it's like, I don't know, half midnight now. Um, about a lot of the bad things that have happened over this weekend specifically, um, this being, uh, what's the date today? The 4th of May. Um, and with the Pagano Ferrucci uh, incidents yesterday that happened in IndyCar and the uproar and kind of, I just want to do a little timeline of this, what's happened uh, in terms of off-sim racing. Um, and when this all kicked off, it was instantly, right, companies were like, who can we get? And including myself, I, I made the attempt to get a few real world racing drivers and realized very, very quickly that that wasn't the answer um, for me personally. Uh, I, fortunately, I've been able to get involved in such events, which is great, um, but it gave me more chance to focus on my own stuff. But the timeline, so the first company or companies really to grasp the idea of getting real drivers in or producing really big events were The Race and uh, Veloce Esports. So Veloce created the Not The Australian Grand Prix, um, which was a, a bit of a car crash, pardon the pun. It wasn't brilliant, um, which again, this is not me slagging them off. I've spoken to uh, Jamie uh, McLaurin, who, who literally runs Veloce. Um, we've had discussions about it and like, I'm you know, happy to say that they've just smashed it from that moment they learn from their mistakes and the product they're putting out right now on a weekly basis is you know for lack of a better term shit up so uh they've realized that it's an entertainment um value needs to be uh, at the forefront and they really have and also if you look at the people they've got involved uh, just to throw a name out there will and e you would never have assumed him being a sim racer but by god his improvement has been ridiculous so the whole group that they've got together in terms of the influencers the real life drivers um, the actual Veloce uh, crew, you know, the, uh, Hayden's doing a very good job in terms of hosting these events. Um, and you've got Justin, who for me is one of my favourite commentators in the world uh, of sim racing. Um, but then you've got the likes of uh, Arava, uh, you've got Tianet Marduk, to mention just a couple uh, who are just smashing it. They're in their element, they're loving it, but, you know, obviously they have that Formula One background and uh, they're able to have their titles, I race Lando Norris and stuff. And, you know, they were kind of the backbone that they needed really for this to, to really kick off. And they've done a sensational job like it is. You know, they've worked in hell with UNICEF and they've raised £9,000 over the weekend like that is astronomical. So, you know, tip my hat to them, you know, learn from your mistakes. And, you know, they, for me, they're the best right now uh, for learning from that mistakes. And they, they really, they really kick the ass out of it, which is great to see. Uh, the race is another organization that went straight in. Um, and again, it was a bit of a, a shit show to be fair to start off with. Uh, but now they've got the legend series, which is just so compelling to watch. Um, you know, there were loads of incidents in the first race where it's just everyone was thrown onto the grid. Let's just get something out there. Um, and it just it just didn't work. Re realistically, if we're going to be honest, it didn't work. Um, but like I said, the series they're running now is is well polished. It's, it's brilliant. They've got the, the commentators are incredible. Um, so, you know, they've done a superb job. And now they're hosting other events like um, today. They actually hosted the DTM official championship which I was commentating on which is uh, one of the best things I've ever done it's only round one it was it was sensational but they're giving the platform for uh, organizations to produce brilliant content which is great you know they've got big numbers on their YouTube channel uh, of course it's helping them they're, getting, they're gaining subscribers on their channel of course it's not being done for free per se um, but again they're another company that have learned from their mistakes um, then F1 jumped on the bandwagon. They took what Veloce had done, uh, motorsports uh, games. They also got involved with uh, the Veloce stuff. Um, but yeah, primarily F1 and kind of took what uh, Veloce had built and then just kind of did their own thing and it become a little bit separated, I guess. And uh, they've kind of got, they, they got it wrong to start off with as well. They had like uh, a few esports drivers and then a, just a load of like legend drivers and, and current Formula One drivers and, it didn't work to start off with. It was, it was terrible. If we're going to be completely honest, like I'm a fan. I'm, I always say this. I am very privileged to be in a position where I get to commentate, get paid 
um, to be involved in the sim racing world when I'm just a genuine fan. Like the excitement in my commentary is just me fangirling the hell out of sim racing. That's just the way it is. I'm not ashamed to admit that in the slightest. Um, but F1 are sorted out now. They've got loads of esports drivers. My, like my personal preference would have been 10 drivers from each, uh, one driver from each team, like current Formula One, uh, maybe a past driver or indeed like a development driver from, uh, you know, Red Bull have got 460 million development drivers around the world. Um, and then an esports driver from last season's F1 esports, uh, which again, that was another incredible show. Um, and it's kind of got to that point now. So we're starting to see like incredible racing as if it was, you know, Formula One, uh, which is great. Uh, then we had the uh, World RX. That's been happening for the last couple of weeks. An invitational event. And oh my God, that's so good. They got the best two people to run the show um, in terms of, well, not run the show, but um, be the faces of the show. Andrew Coley, Neil Cole. Um, just those two are just, you could print money with those two guys. They're just, they're genuinely excited. Uh, whether it be real rally cross or, or indeed um, sim racing, they are genuinely excited. They love the sport and they want to see it do well. Um, a lot of the RX drivers are in there. Then they've got like Felix da Costa race to, uh, to Antonio Felix da Costa race today. Uh, they have Nicky Tim as well race today. Um, it's good to see those sorts of guys uh, there being involved. And then you had like Fail Race. Fail Race got as an opportunity as well, which is great to see. Fantastic YouTuber. Um, and then they've got like the, the Del Olmo brothers who are just. <laughs> They are they are rally crossing sim racing. They are incredible. Um, so that's a really nice mix. Uh, maybe the esports drivers are kind of uh, not taking the piss, but they're just a bit too fast. But then you've got like the handsome brothers who are just incredible. It like the mix has been pretty good, and it's been a great show to watch as well. Um, I keep looking down, so I've got loads of notes here because I'm actually being organised for once. Um, and then we've got Race Room. So Race Room made a big, big mistake. Uh, their, their intentions were incredible. So they decided to give all of the content away for free on Race Room, which just killed everyone's opportunity of running leagues, running the events. We had the Race From Home event around Nordschleife with a load of touring car drivers, DTM drivers, like um, loads of grand touring sort of series drivers, a couple of open wheel drivers, Formula E. And... Uh, the stream had to be cut after one race because the servers just couldn't handle like us having a race because there was everyone and their brother getting involved. So that happened. Race room learned from it, and they've kind of I, I feel like they their servers have been have been upped because we had the DTM championship today, which was phenomenal. One of the best things I've ever worked on, like for sure. Like the drivers had never been on the grid together. Like we had seven DTM championships in total between the drivers. We had uh, drivers who won championships in the 90s. Um, we then had drivers who like Renny Rast that won it last year. We had Gary Paffett who won it in 2005 and 2018. So like we had drivers from all different eras over the last sort of 30 years, uh, which was really cool. A couple of influences and then we had some qualifiers as well. And um, the you know, apart from one qualifier, won the first race, like the actual D DTM drivers were phenomenal. Um, and it just goes to show what you can do. And like the smiles on their faces really, for me, told the story about how much these specific people enjoyed sim racing. So it was an opportunity for them to really show how off, you know, how much they enjoy it. Um, so yeah, there was that. Uh, and then we have the S ACC SRE Sports. That was always going to happen, but obviously it's going to be, um, it's on it, it's on Sky uh, F1 Italy, which that's massive. Like that is huge news to see that it's going to be put on the mainstream. Uh, again, there, it was a lot of drivers. It was like 50 drivers in on one server, which is always going to be messy, especially if they've never raced each other before. Um, it's a bit like the first race of the Formula One season when there's like a transitional period between generations. It's always a little bit messy. Uh, people need to learn each other's traits. And I know that sounds stupid, like Formula One's the pinnacle of motorsport, but still there's silly little mistakes from rookies um, and you know some of the older drivers that just don't you know don't get the aggression of a younger driver. It's just natural. It's motorsport. That's just the way it is. Um, so that was just yeah, ACC smashing it, it. You know, it's kind of given them an option. And that's one thing I will, will, will say. As much as this pandemic going on in the world right now is horrendous, it has given given gamers, uh, specifically sim racing, because that's been put into the mainstream right now, an opportunity. And like we would all be very silly if we didn't take this opportunity. Um, you know, for a lot of us, it doesn't really change our lifestyle. We don't really leave the house because we're putting so many hours into what we do. Um, like I specifically, you know, I run this actual vision community racing and we've had to extend our leagues 
um, to an extra 200 people a week. So we're, next season, it's actually going to be about 800 people racing weekly. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know how it, whether that will maintain after this has all happened, when people are going back to work and whatnot. Um, but in the meantime, you know, it, it, it is what it is. God, I do need people to go back to work because I need a haircut. This is bad. Um, and then we have the GT Sport top 16 stars. And again, GT Sport for me have missed the mark. So they stopped the drivers from actually streaming their events. Like, so I, that's as far as I'm aware anyway. So the top 16 stars race, none of them were allowed to stream their own uh, point of view. And yeah, it's just... I don't know, it just doesn't sit well with me on that one. Like a big event like that, like that's a real genuine opportunity for these drivers to like make their Twitch channels, you know, get more viewers in, double their viewers or, or, or whatever. But it didn't happen. Um, but yeah, it's, it, is, it's, it is what it is. But it's another company trying to do something different while this is happening, which is really good for sim racing. You know, it's another opportunity for people who may not have watched sim racing before but maybe play the game or don't have no idea. Like, the, you know, it could be a a son or a daughter that have gone, oh, mum, dad, just, just come watch this for an hour. You know, we, we are stuck inside. It's what, like it's another set of eyes watching sim racing. Of course, it's not for everybody. Um, but, you know, ultimately, there are going to be people who be like, oh, this is legitimate. I, I really fancy watching this. So we've uh, had those competitions coming through. Uh, content creators have just gone through the roof. To name just a few, uh, Jimmer is invited to every single event possible. Um, he is the spearhead of us content creators, um, and I'm, I'm very happy to fly, uh, be underneath that flag on that ship of what Jim is driving. Um, very, very nice guy, um, and he just understands. He, he's, I say, I say, understands. He's just a normal person. Like he's a, just a genuine bloke um, who is just going to grab this opportunity with both hands. Like I tip my hat to him. Like we've raised twenty five thousand pounds for charity from one of his events, um, you know, and that would have happened regardless of this current situation, for sure. You know, there's been many charity events from Jimmer. Uh, it's actually, it's a massive, massive pleasure that I got to commentate on that. But then we did like the Wreckfest event and stuff with loads of us sim racers, which is like a let our hair down time, have a few drinks, you know, purposely crash each other out. Um, no, no racing whatsoever, really. And it, it was a really nice stream. It was really good stuff. But all of us content creators are really obviously getting more people watching, which does bring a lot of negativity in. The, the chat can be toxic because people are just kind of only coming in to try and sort of shit on what you're doing. And it's it's a strange one. It really is a strange one. But ultimately, for the most part, most people are kind of like opening their eyes to what we do. And I, I get a lot of the, the same things said, like, oh, well done for doing this, you know, in this, these tough times. It's like been doing this for a long time you know this is this is not something we're just doing because of a pandemic going on in the world um and you know ultimately i guess my point is when all of these stars and all these big companies are going back to real world motorsport covering real world motorsport people like jardier people like jimmer people like myself um you know people like fail race those sort of people we are still going to be here we're not going anywhere this is this is what we do like you know we built the foundations for companies to be able to come in and do these big events and it's like I'm not going to apologize for that at all either like we have genuinely built the foundations to uh, for big companies to thrive and make money like you know they, the the people like Veloce is they're always going to be here because they they come from esports like Veloce esports is is a thing um the race they'll go back to real world motorsport I would imagine they'll try and cover as much sim racing as they possibly can uh, moving forward but they they're, they're a real motorsport channel um so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, and I guess the, you know, the, we've had NHS charity streams from so many different creators. Outrage87 uh, on Twitch is just to name uh, one. Uh, he actually dyed his hair blue. Like, we've got, like, so many people who are making money for the NHS here in the UK um, and also national health services or, um, or health services around the world. Uh, it's like, you know, making a, the best of a bad situation, not to say we've been inspired by it. I guess the, the people on the ground, like the key workers, we've been inspired by them. Um, but it's kind of all we know, like, you know, it may come across as, uh, I don't know if it comes across as arrogant that we feel like we can do this or should do this. I don't, I, I don't know. It's uh, some people receive it in a negative way. There's no negatives here. People are raising money for unbelievable causes. But again, the pe people who are raising this money in, in the community, they've been here the whole time. Like they haven't just appeared because of this pandemic. 
So like I said, we're always going to be here. Like it's, we're not disappearing. We're not going anywhere. Um, my next uh, step is iRacing. So iRacing have, have really pushed the boat out on this. They've, you know, they've signed contracts with uh, big TV broadcasters in America uh, with their NASCAR replacement series. Um, the actual, like, um, there's, that's, so that's not replacements anymore. It's like a, a genuine uh, e-NASCAR event now for current drivers, ex-drivers and whatnot. And for the most part, that's been pretty damn good. Um, very enjoyable to watch. Uh, the attitudes there have been exceptional. A lot of banter with the drivers and whatnot. There, you know, That's another thing. Every uh, self-respecting race driver now as a streamer the irony like i said this on twitter the other day um real racing is a gateway into sim racing like that's how it is now it's it's, it's crazy um but so i racing have also done the indycar series which we had a huge fallout today um but to talk about two people first so we had uh bubba wallace um and carl larson of course carl larson um dropped the racial slur on um live on stream which is just indefensible moron. Um, yeah, he will not probably not drive in NASCAR for, I don't know whether it'd be forever, but yeah, it won't be for a while. Um, and then we have Bubba Wallace who rage quit and his sponsors dropped him. And it's just like, yeah, that just shows the legitimacy here. Uh, we we'll yet to see the fallout from what happened on Saturday evening where Simon Pagano, and this pains me to say because he's one of my idols. Like I, I got to shake that guy's hand within minutes of him winning the Indy 500 last year. And he intentionally took out Lando Norris, a Formula One driver um, at the Indy 175 or whatever they called that, um, because he made an unbelievable overtake that isn't deemed possible in real life. But because it's a video game, it's possible. Well, that's why he took the move on, because it's possible in sim racing. It was a great move. It was an incredible move. Uh, the guy on his outside checked up. I can't remember who the guy was who checked up. And Pagano got put into a wall. A couple of laps later, Pagano states in his stream, um, I'm going to come back out and take Lando out. Took Lando out. Claimed he was going to the pits. Did this almighty bullshit apology. Um, and then we have Ferrucci, who is getting a lot of attention. The guy's never been a star. The guy's been known to be racist. And he's been known for driving shit like shit it's it's never been a case of oh there yeah, that Ferrucci's a top driver I've never never heard that in the same sentence so give give him as little time in the sun as possible uh he had no remorse for what he did he took out um took out a driver from the lead of the race uh which handed Scott McLaughlin the victory and that's indefensible like if you are representing your sponsors if you're representing your brand being IndyCar like this is as serious as IndyCar. The reason why IndyCar are putting this event on television is to keep their sponsors happy, to uh, keep marketing their products that are on the cars. Like it is a serious thing. You, you don't. You, there are young drivers who are, are in this IndyCar event, genuinely trying to make a name for themselves for when the real stuff comes back. Like this, this isn't a joke to them. It's not just a video game to them, and it just takes one or two people to ruin it. Um, like the first week IndyCar, of the IndyCar series, Lando, of course, went and won it. Unbelievable. Like it was a fantastic event. And like this was a, an amazing event. Don't get me wrong. And then spoiled with two laps of petulance. Just poor, shitty petulance from two people who drove with their ego. Um, they, there's, there's no two ways about it. Where does that leave us in sim racing? Well, it's, it's like with the Carl Larson thing, the Bubba Wallace thing, and now this. It's kind of we're taking two steps forward and then three steps back all the time. Um, and it and it filters down. So the worry for me is, you know, you see young people, um, impressionable people who have just got into iRacing. You know, now they've got like 15,000 people on the service constantly, concurrently. When, you know, before this, it was between two and five, maybe. If it's a special event, of course, it's a bit more. But there's more people on the service, like going from rookies now. I've got, uh, like, we have a, a, an endurance team and one of our drivers couldn't make it to the endurance race this weekend because he couldn't get out of rookies because it's just that, carnage down there because so many people just see the pros doing it and think it's acceptable um they have to be held accountable there's no two ways about it um if it was me that did that in an official race like that i wouldn't be allowed on the service again so pagano shouldn't be allowed on the service again um and again uh, ben constituous he tweeted earlier on about it and i just put under there they need to remove the star out of the event for integrity it's star power 
uh, integrity over star power. Not again, not that Ferrucci should be mentioned in that bracket at all again. Like they should be looking for integrity over a, a, everything at this point. Like we had the um, the Veloces and the races uh, at the start of this whole event where they were just trying to throw everything together. Um, and, you know, with lack of time, they just had to get something out there, which they did. But look at the improvement of those two specific companies. Just, yeah, like it's night and day to what we saw on the weekend with the IndyCar. So, again, remove them, get them out of the way. And, you know, there's an unbelievable product there. And everything iRacing have done has been, it's been pretty damn good, apart from just moments of one or two people's stupidity. Um, and that's the nature of sim racing. Like, we do have hot mics. We do have... Um, we do have um, like the ability to take someone out without anyone getting hurt, but we just don't like. It's, I've been on. I've done thousands upon thousands of streams, and I'm just not a racist. I don't say things like that because that's just not what I am. Like it's you can't act. And we're catching people out now. People are coming in and they're showing their true colours and they're not understanding the system. And they're not understanding how these things work. And it's it's horrendous. It, just seeing these people that you look up to just making stupid mistakes. But again, they just have to be held accountable. Um, but then on the flip side, you look at the Porsche Esports from iRacing yesterday where the Red Bull guys of uh, Sebastian Job and um, Graham Carroll were just unbelievable but the racing at Zolder was just fantastic so you know it do we need the star power really I don't really think we do like it's it's weird you know we've got people the people like the Landos and the Maxes who've been sim racing for years they're a part of the community like they're not here because this pandemic's happening they've, they've been around for a stupid amount of time so the people who just come in because of this maybe to cash in do we really need those drivers? Probably not. And I raised a point earlier on that sim racing has a bigger talent pool at the top end with all of the um, like games like Project Cars, WRX or, or Dirt, uh, Dirt 2.0, ACC, iRacing, um, F1, all of the games you can mention, GT Sport, all of the games you can mention there. We There is a bigger talent pool at the top end of all of those championships than all of the FIA-sanctioned motorsport of, uh, championships in the world of real motorsport. We have a bigger talent pool. Um, it's all about how we tell their story. It's all about how we make it marketable so people care about these individuals. They'll tune in to talk, and and maybe if their favourite driver's live-streaming, they're, they're actually going to be able to get a response from their favourite driver. But it's all about telling that story. Um, you know, we we do need these bigger companies to come in and invest and put us on big scale, like television broadcast, etc., um, where we get to see video footage of these drivers in their real, you know, in their real life. They're more accessible. They're more willing to do the video content. You see Formula One drivers, um, not for the most part now, it's a lot better than it's ever been, but there's, it's still such a closed book. Um, whereas with sim races, like we, that's all we know. All we know is telling our story. Like we want people to follow us on Twitter. We want people to follow us on Instagram. It's not a case of like if if someone stopped a sim racer um, in the street and asked for an autograph, they would just be blown away by it. Like that's. But we need to get to that point. I tell you, the best story I've. I, this is the, one of the best things I've ever seen in sim racing. Max Pappas, right? So he has driven every form of motorsport you can imagine. He's won what everything you can think of. He's an incredible driver, but he's the head IndyCar steward. He worked with us on a Logitech G Challenge last year. He was at Indy 500, of course. He's the head steward at Indy 500, and he came and sat on the rig. And Oli Pakala, who is a McLaren Shadow, uh, was a McLaren Shadow driver, uh, more of a consultant for them. Uh, he actually sort of heads up the sim racing Finland group now. Um, one of my friends, like just a genuinely lovely bloke. Max Pappas, it was like Max was looking at Brad Pitt. He was just in awe of Ollie. It was the strangest thing. It was amazing. It was just like he was sat, I don't know, 45 minutes talking to Ollie about sim racing. Like it was just, it was phenomenal to see. And that's the point we will get to. We will get to that because we will outshine the idiots that are coming in just to cash in while they can. Um, you know, while this horrendous things going on in the world they'll disappear but we'll still be here but it's all about 
how we market ourselves. Um, and I mean that as in the sim racing drivers, not me, I'm not a sim racing driver, crikey. Um, not, not anymore anyway. Um, but it's all about how we tell their stories. That's my job. My job is to make sure that like when you watch a group of drivers, whether it be um, a beginner's race on Project Cars or it be the pro racing series on ACC within my own community, that the people watching when they, at like three days time, in the back of the head, like, oh, that Jennifer Lopez won that race. Like they understand, uh, you know, oh, that, that Darren King was so unlucky with uh, with the wheel disconnecting or, um, you know, it's my job to tell those stories for people to remember. Um, and and, and uh, that's always been my passion. It's always been my passion to help people grow their social media, help people um, get themselves into the public eye. We just need like more people understanding that. Um, and we all need to sort of learn from the mistakes that these big drivers are doing, the big names, so to speak, um, to progress really and kind of, I don't know, maybe put the, like iRacing, the, the other games in the world need to put more emphasis on their stars as opposed to what F1 driver can they get in? What past, you know, driver they can get in from such an era? Um, I don't know, I'm kind of just talking bullshit now, but um, I wanted to just talk Lando Norris. Um, that that guy is the, he's like the leader of the, the between sim racing and races. He's always been sim racing. And what happened to him on Saturday in the IndyCar event was horrendous. But how cool and calm he was, like he could have taught, been like, oh, F in this, F in that. And he wasn't. He just told the story. He, to he said what happened. You could tell he was disappointed. You could tell he was upset. But he just told the story. He didn't worry about anything else. He, he, he just That guy's got a head well beyond his years like if he's not a future world champion of Formula I don't know don't know what it is mentally that guy is so strong and you could tell he was like talking about how many hours he put in like he doesn't enter a sim racing event because he's Lando Norris he enters a sim racing event because he wants to win it and he's good enough to win it like there are maybe when I first started there were the same group of sim racers were good at every game now there are probably a handful of drivers that could compete on all games at the top level. Lando Norris is a Formula One driver. He can compete on multiple games at the top level as well. The guy is ridiculous. Um, but his temperament is just second to none. And he will be the one that takes us forward. He will be the one that br bridges the gap here. And I don't want to, like, it's not some sort of, you know, I've not got a poster above that I worship to Lando Norris. Like, I'm just, just proud of him. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter what I think. No one's going to give a shit what I think, really. But... Like genuinely, I'm just proud of him. Like he, I'm proud to have him as our not leader. Leader is the wrong word, but our, our I guess he's our spokesperson. Sim racers, like he's the one who who gives it legitimacy. Um, and now you've got like the Alex Albon who who won today in the uh, virtual Formula One. Uh, he's another one. He's very well spoken, cool, calm. George Russell's another one. Uh, Charles Leclerc is just a talented son of a gun. He's a little bit more. Um, a little bit more edgy, let's say, but yeah, he is he is a talented, talented young man. And again, he hopefully he will embrace the sim racing world once this once the world gets a little bit back to normal. Um and yeah, just it's weird. Like I'm just rambling here. I just wanted to get a few things off my chest, really. I don't think don't know whether it made any sense or not. I guess you guys can ask me, me some questions in the comments. Um if I upload this. I don't even know if I'm gonna upload this. I just sat here thinking I need to kind of speak on this. I'll sum it. I have reference to, but like my biggest gripe really with all of this is the most sport journalists who are all like questioning the, the, uh, the legitimacy um, and just to stay relevant almost. It's like, oh, I'm going to post, I'm going to shit on this because it's, it's gaming and I'm, I'm past 40 years old, so I can't understand this gaming. So I'm just going to shit on it. I don't understand it, but I'm going to shit on it. And I might get some likes and some retweets and make people angry and yeah, it works every time because we're so passionate about our, it's, it's not even a hobby now. It's, well, I guess we are like a cult. It's, um, it, it, we, we are that passionate about this sport, this legitimacy of the sport um, that we will defend it with our lives. I certainly will. Um, I, I won't hear a bad word said about sim races. You know, I've, I deal with, we've got maybe 4,000 people within my community now who race. And I deal with the people who are just super grateful for everything done for them. And I deal with people who, 
more realistic to real world racing drivers is never their fault it's always somebody else's fault they can never pin the blame they're rude um uh, they expect everything done for them like we have all sorts but i would defend them to the hills like that's how passionate i am about sim racing and these journalists coming out with tweets acting like um th their opinion really means something it doesn't i'm afraid like ultimately you can say whatever you like about this and maybe a couple of sponsors that were thinking about it won't get involved but that opens the door for another sponsor to come and get involved and sim racing will continue sim racing will always be here and sim racing i think if motorsport companies do not keep up with the demand for sim racing alongside their existing series i think you could see some top fia motorsport events cease to exist i genuinely believe that we've had the the spotlight shone on us and you know look at how good everything is how how good everything works like you see all the time on television and this is millions of pound budget you see mistakes on television all the time like it's they, they get the wrong cues and it's not the presenters fault or anything but they get it wrong they're human at the end of the day and look how well people like myself just an average joe with three children at home in my studio that my missus likes to call the bedroom. Yeah, I don't know. We're able to create something that people care about, something that you can get excited about. We door banging, uh, you know, incidents if there are incidents, unbelievable racing if it's unbelievable racing, drag races to the line. And it ain't going anywhere. Like we are not going, it doesn't matter. This is just given us more of a spotlight. Like that is what's helped us here. So I guess my point of this is a lot of people are making mistakes um, and they're being called out for it rightly. The Simon Paginos, the, um, the, the Bubbers, the, um, the Ferrucci's, if you like, uh, the Carl Larson's, they've all made big, big mistakes and they're, they're yeah, undefendable and they should be held accountable. But do we need them? Not a chance. We have our own ecosystem. We have our own, uh, ability to do whatever the hell we want and that again is the beauty of sim racing we can do what the hell we want you know we can change a format like that if we have some accidents in qualifying they get a new car this is not going anywhere this is just like going nowhere we're able to um like financially it's so so cheap to do compared to real world motorsport and uh for my money and this is genuine you know i the Damon Hill was the reason I got into motorsport racing. Uh, 1996 world champion in Formula One. I'm more excited by sim racing events now at 33 years old than I am real world motorsport. That's a fact. Um, and a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that's, well, the 10 people to watch this. They're going to be like, no, yeah, you are. That's just your opinion. There's a lot of people like that now. Um, it's accessible. You get more of a feel for the drivers. You're able to talk to the drivers. They're more accessible on social media. Um, you also have the opportunity to be like them. You just need a basic setup at home and you can actually do what they do on telly. Can you go to a Formula One track and get in a Formula One car, zip it around for a couple of laps? Unless you're ex Matty G then, no, no you can't. I'm just babbling on now. I just wanted to get a few things off my chest. Again, whether I upload this or not, I don't know. What relevance this has, I don't know. Um, what title is it gonna be? No idea. I just wanted to talk about sim racing. I bloody love it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Actual Vision, and I shall see you next time.